guys, welcome to another video. My name is Delaya from thedelayab.com and I'm an elevated streetwear fashion designer. My channel is about fashion design style and self, so if any of that touches your soul, go on and hit that subscribe button right now. So today's video is actually part one to a two-part series and it's kind of been in the making for a while. I think I started this project way back in August 2019 and it is, what, April 2020? So it's it's been going on for a while, for too long actually. The project is a tuxedo robe and I was making it for my cousin. I did it for two reasons. One was to just practice tailoring and to just get better at my craft, learn things while sewing. And the other one was I thought it would be a good source of outside accountability. Turns out it wasn't. I thought that telling someone that I was making them something would push me to get fin would push me to finish it faster, and that didn't happen. It actually drug out for a very long time. Probably because she's my cousin and she didn't pay anything, so there was no real urgency to get it done. But it took a lot longer than I than it was supposed to. The project timeline was also derailed because I had other things to do. I had videos to edit. I also did my goddaughter's, um, what did I do? I also did my goddaughter's birthday dress. She was Princess Tiana for her fifth birthday. Uh, I'll link that video down in the description box below so you can see how that one turned out. But basically, it, it lasted a long time. This tuxedo robe lasted a long time. In part one, you'll see me cut out the pieces prep the pieces and do a little sewing all the way up into the first fitting. I did the pattern making off camera because I wanted to focus on numbers and everything. So that was an off camera. But in this part, you'll see me do some sewing and things. Okay, so it's taken a minute, but I am finally cutting out this tuxedo robe today. Um, it should, it's not gonna be quick because it never is. So I'm not even gonna set myself up for that. Okay, so here I am laying out the fabric. There's a stripe, so I'm trying to line it up as best as possible, keeping the stripe straight, clearly. Laying out the larger pieces, trying to fit everything into a reasonable location. And then we pin it. Okay, so I literally just started cutting and I have already missed that. Great, great. Um, there was a pattern piece that I didn't add seam allowance to, but I did mark add half an inch for seam allowance. I even drew the line out on the fabric. So I even drew the line out on the fabric right here, but I still cut on the edge of the pattern piece. So this whole panel is essentially wasted fabric. I mean, we're off to a great start, aren't we? <laughs> okay, so crisis averted. Um, the piece that I cut out was a front panel piece. So what I did was took the front facing piece which is skinnier than the front panel so I can still use the same fabric and I'm not wasting any so it's great. So this was the first one that I cut. This is the facing piece so as you can see there's still some extra so this part will be wasted but not the whole piece. So we're okay. There were probably more than 30 pieces in total that I had to cut from the self pieces, the front panels, back panels, and lapels and collars. And then I also had to cut fusible interfacing and lining pieces for the pockets. Not to mention I messed up a few times or I had to change the pattern type so I ended up cutting a few more pieces.
One of the crucial things I had to make sure when cutting though was matching up the stripes, especially in the front. I wanted to make sure the pattern sat well and gave you that elevated classic pinstripe vibe. So that was something I really paid attention to when laying out all the pieces. And here I am applying the fusible interfacing. What this does is keeps uh, the fabric stable, it keeps it from stretching, and especially in the lapel, it helps with the sharp corners and keeping it sturdy and making sure it's crisp and sharp. And here I am marking each of the pattern pieces. I'm marking their notches. These are points and I guess notes that help you line up one piece to another piece to make sure everything is sewing how it's supposed to. And let the fun part begin. No, I'm just kidding. So now that everything is cut out and prepped how it's supposed to be, I will start sewing. I am doing the front pieces first. So the front panels, there's a princess seam. So I'm pinning that together now. And then I will start sewing that, sewing the shoulders, and just start putting everything together. How do you feel about this fabric though? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. To me, the tiny stripes are everything. There's a slight shine to it, like a slight luster that makes it look a little fancier than it is. These are actually drape fabric or drapery for curtains and upholstery. I got this from the Fashion District in downtown LA. It's a store close to Michael Levine. I don't know what the name of the actual store is. If I remember or find out what it is, I will post it in the description box below. This fabric is thicker than you would normally use on a robe, but the design inspiration was something fancy, something tailored. You can see in the illustration, these were three options that I gave my cousin. I normally give people three options because you never know what they're vibing to. So these were her three options and she chose the more tailored one, the more pristine one. So that was the energy I went with when I was going to look for fabric. Something clean, something elegant, but also something where you can feel like that boss woman.
And here we are just pressing out all the pieces. I'm pressing the darts and the fisheye darts. It just helps make it look cleaner, a lot more crisp and smooth lines. I actually bought this ham, that's the plaid thing that I'm pressing on. I bought that specifically for this project because I want to up my game in the utensils and the tools that I use to make these jackets and blazers. So that is one of the first investments that I made during this project. Okay, so this is where the tuxedo robe actually looks like it's becoming a piece of clothing and it's not just a huge puzzle. I'm doing the side seams here, so I mean if you want you can put it on at this part. It would be a vest, but it is now pretty wearable. Okay, so I am at my mom's house. I'm getting ready to fit uh, my cousin for her tuxedo robe, and hopefully it goes okay. A um, little nervous, but I mean, it is what it is. I will have to fix it afterwards. I don't know, sorry. All right, so that's what the robe looked like at the fitting. Unfortunately, I had technical difficulties and didn't get to record the entire fitting. Basically what happened was the fit was okay. It was uh, loose on the sides and the back, so I took those in a little bit for a tighter fit because she wanted that hourglass cinched waist feel, so I, uh, I did that, took a note of that. Let me know in the comments, how are you feeling about this tuxedo robe so far? Is it something you're exciting to see? Something you can see yourself wearing, possibly? Is it too fancy or what? Part two is where we'll finish up the video. You'll get to see how the tuxedo robe finished. Um, let me tell you, there's more detail. There's also more struggle. So more struggle coming. There's details, gold buttons. There's also feathers involved, some hand sewing. And yeah, so if you want to see how the tuxedo robe turned out, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when that video is posted. Until next time, guys. Bye.